Hello, this is Mr. Buffington from Simplify Academy and we are dividing decimals by whole numbers today. Let's get into it. We will be using long division to do all of these questions that we do and we are going to practice, practice, practice. So let's do it. We're starting with our first question, 1.5 divided by 3. The way that we would write this for long division is basically switching the order of the numbers. Right, the number first number goes inside the division symbol, the second number is outside, just like this. Now, when you do have a decimal as the first number or inside the division symbol, what you do is move that decimal up. So, I'm just going to go ahead and do that right now. So, you can see I've just moved that decimal up, so it will be within the answer. Then, you pretend the decimals are not there and you divide like normal. I'll start with saying, I look at my division question and I say, how many times does 3 go into 1? Well, 3 is smaller than 1. There's no groups of 3 inside of 1. So I'll look at my full question. How many times does 3 go inside of 15? And that is 5. 5 times 3 is 15 and I subtract to get 0. That's how we do this question. It's pretty straightforward and it looks just like that. Same as long division. Now the trick and what is different with this is that there is a decimal there. So it is important that we do ask ourselves each step. We have to say, does three go into one? No. Does three go into 15? Then the answer will go above the five where you see I put that five above the five and 15. Let's look at another question. Um, also, we could have put a zero in there above the one to say three does not go into one um, and that might have helped as well. I know some people like to do that. Personally, um, I don't write it that way, but you can if, if it you know makes you feel like that's a little bit more clear. Let's do another question here. I want you to try this one out. Pause the video, try it out, watch the the video description or video. Just continue the video and I'll tell you. Hey, welcome back. With this one, we actually start out by saying, can three go into three? And it does, right? So we're gonna move the decimals up, sorry. And then we're gonna ask, does three go into three? Yes, one time. One times three is three. We'll subtract and get zero. And then we do just like we do for long division. We'll bring that six down. Three times two is six. So that leaves us with our final answer. With this one, notice we did have a digit on the right of the decimal and a digital digit on the left of the decimal. And that's fine. Again, you ask how many times three goes into those numbers and you'll put the answer right above the number. Let's go to some slightly larger numbers for some more practice. With this one, we're doing um, 72 hundredths divided by eight. We'll write it out like that, move the decimal up. With this one, when the decimal does go up, notice there's nothing on the left of the decimal. We don't write in that zero because that would sort of be a waste of space. You can if you want, but, but we're not going to in these lessons. Now what I am going to do though is, is start saying 8 goes into 7 and then 8 goes into 72, right? And again, this is really important for those zero place values. So I'll begin by saying, how many times does eight go into seven? Well, zero. Eight does not go into seven. There's no groups of eight inside of seven. So now I move on to the full number 72. How many groups of eight are there inside of 72? And we know that eight times nine is 72. So, oh man, the animation's off. Hold on, where's my nine? There it is. Um, nine times eight is 72, and we get our final answer that this kind of evens out. Notice with this answer, there is that zero in there. And, and so again, really important that we go num digit by digit on the inside to try and make sure that everything lines up. Next question, 5.2 divided by two. We're going to move that decimal up and pretend it's not there and divide like normal. How many groups of two inside of five? Well, two of them, two times five is four. Subtract and we'll bring that one 
bring the 5 down. How many groups of 2 inside of 15? Okay. Now this one here is going to be a little bit complicated. You can kind of see that here because we're going to have some remainders left over. There's 7 groups of 2 inside of 15. And we subtract and get 1. Just like we did with division, um, long, regular long division, we're going to add a zero under here and continue on until we get a solid answer. So in this one, we'll now say how many groups of two inside of 10? Well, there's five, five times two is 10, and that simplifies down. We have a nice clean final answer of 2.75. This will be the pattern that you follow. With long division, you're basically going to keep doing the same steps. The bigger the numbers get, it doesn't really matter. You just keep following these same steps over and over and over. So I have one for you to try. I want you to try this one out. 7.4 divided by 8. And I want to give you a reminder with this. I'm going to write something. We usually don't write fractions with decimals in them, but I want to write it as a fraction just so that you remember Fractions mean division. So I could give you the question in fraction form or in division form, and you would be able to solve in both because both of those mean this with long division. There's three, three ways to write division inside of this screen right now. Okay, now that you've taken a look at that, I want you to try this question out. Go ahead and do 7.4 divided by 8. Remember, you'll move those decimals up and then divide like normal. Just pretend they're not even there. Go for it. Hey, welcome back. We moved that decimal up and now we're going to divide. How many groups of eight inside of seven? None. Seven is smaller than eight. There's no groups of eight inside of seven. Therefore, I move on to the next number, the four. How many groups of eight are there inside of 74? Well, hmm, there's nine. 9 times 8 is 72. When we subtract, we end up with 2. What do we do at this point? We're going to add that 0, bring it down, and keep going. How many groups of 8 inside of 20? Well, there's 2 of them. 2 times 8 is 16, and we subtract and get a 4. We still don't have a, z a nice even 0 at the end, so we're going to add another 0 and bring it down. How many groups of 8 inside of 40? Five of them. Five times eight is actually 40. So we finally get our nice even zero. So we would keep adding zeros until we get something nice and clean on the top and we get no remainders left over. Our final answer for this is 0 0.925. We're going to add some fun to this question by adding more numbers. Yay! 18.425 divided by 5. I am also going to write it as a fraction for you and under this symbol just for fun. I will also remind you that you move the decimal up and then divide like normal. Pause the video and try this one out. Go. Let's do this. How many groups of 5? Let's move that decimal up. How many groups of 5 inside of 1? None. There's no groups of 5 inside of 1, so we move over. 18. How many groups of 5 inside of 18? Well, there's 3 of them. 3 times 5 is 15, and then we subtract, and there's 3 left over. Let's bring that 4 down. How many groups of 5 inside of 34? Well, there's 6 of them. 6 times 5 is 30, so we're left with 4. We'll bring that 2 down. How many groups of 5 instead of 42? I think we did something very similar to that before, right? We had 8. 8 times 5 is 40. We subtract. Um, oops. And then we bring down that 5. How many groups of 5 inside of 25? There's 5. And we subtract for our final answer. There is the entire question. Long division to solve this whole thing. It's not a really nice, clean number as an answer, but with dividing decimals, it rarely will be. It's a good skill to know how to do this long division so that you can do it by hand. And no matter how many digits you have there, you can just keep adding zeros or just keep solving until you get a nice clean zero on the bottom there.
I have another one for you with a couple of larger numbers. 59.593 divided by 23. Pause the video recording. Try this out. Go. All right, let's write it as a fraction. Let's write it as a division question for long division. Remember, the inside decimal moves up. Now we're going to go through this question. How many groups of 23 inside of 5? None. How many groups of 23 inside of 59? Well, there's 2. 2 times 23 is 46. We'll subtract, and we get 13. We bring that 5 down, and we ask ourselves how many groups of 23 inside of 135. We're getting into some larger numbers here, so we might have to do some guess and check, and that's okay. One trick that I use when I'm doing this is to round and, and estimate. I would say how many groups of 20 inside of 140, right? Or how many groups of 20 inside of 100? And just take a look there. There's that extra 3 on the end, so we can kind of round both numbers down a little bit. So let's try 5. 5 times 23 gives us 115. And when we subtract, we get 20. That one's really close. Um, you might have guessed 6 and tried it out, and that would be fine. Remember, if that number, um, 115 there, if that number, when you try it out, is larger than 135, you know you have to guess your number 5 um, a little bit smaller. And if after you subtract this number here, this 20, if that ends up being larger than 23, then you have to increase the number up top there. In this case, 5 is the correct answer, and when we subtract, we get 20. We'll bring down that 9. And how many groups of 23 inside of 209? There are 9. When we multiply that, we get 207. So we would subtract and get 2. That brings down your 3. And, oh, this looks really nice, right? How many groups of 23 are there inside of 23? Well, there's 1. And that gets us to our nice even zero. You have the answer over there on the left. It was showing up a little early and that's okay. Our answer is 2.591. That's how many groups of 23 there are inside of 59.593. Um, but the point is that you've done the division now. You've worked with larger numbers and you've solved it. Nice job. We are going to go back to place values here just briefly. If you're given this type of question, 8 tenths divided by 4, you would write it out like this. Then you're going to solve it just like normal. If you would prefer to write out 0 0.8 divided by 4, that's fine. You can definitely do that. Let's take a look. We move the decimal up and we divide like normal. How many groups of 4 inside of 8? Well, there's 2. And, and that's it. This type of question should be pretty quick. The only challenge with it, with it is that you have to know your place values. Other than that, this is so much easier than the other things you've been doing. And now, because the sixth grade standards require it, I'm going to put in a question that I really think is silly. I'm going to be straightforward with you. I think this question's a little bit silly, but I want you to understand how to do it because you will see it in your future. Here we and here it is, 15 tenths divided by 3. 15 tenths is kind of a funny way to say this number, but it is consistent with everything we've done before. Think about the number, um, if I were to write this out, that's 15 hundredths, right? Or if I said, if I put a zero in here, that would be 15 thousandths. The last digit, in this case the 5, always lands in the column where you're going to be, or in the place value, that you say out loud. 15 hundredths, because on this one it's in the hundredths column. 15 thousandths, because it's in the thousandths column. When I have 15 tenths, 
this number is going to be in the tenths column, which means my decimal is going to be right there. It's a strange way to say 1 and 5 tenths or 1.5, but that's what it means. And it is in the sixth grade standard, so I wanted you to see it um, before we get through the, our sixth grade course, but it is something to just be aware of. All right, let's move along and actually solve this question. 1.5 divided by 3 and solve it. How many? Um, we're going to move the decimal up and then solve like normal. How many groups of 3 inside of 1? 0. How many groups of 3 inside of 15? 5. 5 times 3 is 15, and it's solved. Again, the question itself is not comple complex at all. It's not complicated. What's challenging about this is knowing that 15 tenths means 1.5. So there is one question like this um, in the worksheet, and I'll have it on the quiz as well. Um, quiz is randomized, so you may or may not get that question. But just so that you're aware that this exists. All right, a couple things to remember. First off, you need to remember the steps for long division. They are important. They will come back later. You'll see them again. Bigger numbers are just a distraction. Just keep following the steps. Every step. If you keep following them, you will be fine. I hope that video was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.